On the outskirts of Louisville, Kentucky, perched on top of a hill, lies the battered shell of a huge and imposing building. It's not the kind of place you'd stumble across by accident. It's pretty secluded. To get to the place, you have to take this long, winding drive that snakes up the hill. At first sight, the building raises more questions than answers. You can't really tell if this is the front or the back of the building. How do you get in? It's a bit disorienting. This rambling structure seems to go on forever in every direction. While ominous looking creatures gaze down from above, inside, the different spaces paint an eerie and confused picture. We have to ask, why are these abandoned? What terrible thing happened here that makes people want to stay away? And how is it linked to a modern day global pandemic? A three-story solarium dominates its southern face. Could this be the key to unlocking the mystery of this building's original purpose? Is there would have been a bed pulled out in front of every single open doorway, all the way down and around this thing, across the whole back. Dale Clark grew up just five miles away and has been showing people around for the last 18 years. And then there were usually smaller children's beds shoved up against the brick wall on the outside. It must have been a very strange sight coming up that driveway and seeing all the people out like that. This is Waverly Hills, a 180,000 square foot facility built to house over 500 people. But the devil here is in the detail. So if from the outside it looks like maybe it could be a fancy hotel or retreat, the inside has a very different feel to it. There's not much left behind, but there are odd bits of medical equipment. This is not just a place of life here in the, the hills of Kentucky. What we're looking at is a place of death. This is the morgue. We have no idea why this room is so small. At the worst cases, a body an hour, this little room is going to fill up very quickly. That's why there's a maintenance department down the far end of the building that's four times the size of this it became the auxiliary morgue during the worst of it. When you need to have an auxiliary morgue, you're taking a lot of bodies. Waverly wasn't alone. The body count was piling up all over the states, as well as the rest of the world. It hit the US so badly that they had to form a national committee to deal with the problem. A global pandemic of this disease struck terror into the hearts of everyone. The rampaging disease was tuberculosis. Built in 1924, this was more than just a hospital. It was a home for those afflicted. You've also got dentists and barbers and even a gift shop. The patients are here long enough to, to grow their hair long and get it cut. They need to function in this place for the rest of their lives. Children that were born in Waverly had to be taken away from their mothers immediately after birth. The risk of contamination was that severe. The story of a patient called Lois brings this heartbreaking reality to life. She was a mother of two when she got here. And if a patient was doing better, they would allow them to go home on furlough and then have to come back. She came back and it didn't go well. She had conceived a child while she was gone. To our knowledge, the only time Lois ever got to see her son that was born here was standing in one of these solarium windows looking at the road that ran across the back of the building as somebody held him up. Patients need to be isolated. They need to be kept away from cities and towns where they could cause thousands of infections and thousands of deaths. 
it can survive in the air, and it can attack any organ in your body, but it usually goes for the lungs. The Victorian name for it was consumption, because it consumes your body from the inside. Jefferson County, Kentucky, was one of the worst hit places in the country. Fortunately, Waverly Hills rose to the occasion. If you're gonna try out a new procedure, Waverly was where you're gonna try it out. And they were really at the cutting edge of TB treatment. But in the early 1900s, the best tuberculosis treatment was still experimental, to say the least. Procedures we talk about most of all in here are autonomothorax, which is basically where they would let air into your chest cavity and manually collapse one of your lungs. It's very, very painful. They thought, mistakenly, that while the lung was collapsed, it would rest and heal itself. Medical science had not yet learned how to deal with this disease, and that the best way to heal was for the patient to heal himself or herself. Aside from these last-ditch operations, there were only three treatments thought to be effective against TB. Fresh air, sunshine, and nutrition. These are the best treatments they had, but as we know from the number of people that were dying here, it wasn't really that effective in the end. There are hospitals today which have a whole separate set of corridors for moving dead people out of rooms. The solution here was more direct a body shoot. It was not originally built to be a body shoot. It was built to bring up building supplies and materials. All the mechanism, machines, the track, and everything that was built to bring bricks up, they just reversed it and took bodies down. And scrawlings on the walls serve as a reminder of the risks taken by the staff who worked here. The employees were the original graffiti artists. There's a lot of name signed in pencil. Quite a few of them are dated, and some of them are very old. It's just to let themselves know that they're still alive, that, you know, they came and did a horrible job, took a chance on getting deathly ill, and a lot of them, you know, survived. A new discovery was about to change everything. Waverly would have to reinvent itself. In 1943, a scientific breakthrough spelt the beginning of the end for the Waverly Hills Sanatorium. The antibiotic streptomycin was discovered, and it was the cure the world had been waiting for. Without streptomycin or similar antibiotics, tuberculosis would still be a, a plague even in the developed world where it's rarely seen. Closed as a TB sanatorium in 1961, it is now frequented by people looking for something entirely different. If an unmerciful God allowed the souls of the departed to roam the world, then this is just the kind of place people imagine unquiet spirits would be. A room on Waverly's fifth floor is the most anticipated stop on Dale's paranormal tour. A nurse who'd gotten pregnant by a doctor who was married to someone else mysteriously was found hanging out here in the hallway across from the elevator car. It's just that right up there is where she was found. Was she just overcome? Or a lot of people think that maybe something more sinister happened. No one will ever 100% for sure know exactly what happened to her. <laughs> 